The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Dr. Doreen grant is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen grant Dr. grant Dr. Doreen grant Dr. Doreen grant is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Here we go. Good morning and welcome to Ask Dr. Doreen. I'm Shannon Penrod and I'm here with the fabulous Dr. Doreen grant -Pichet. We're live right now. It is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and excited to be back. We were off last week because every once in a while we have to give Traven a break. Of course. Uh, so our fabulous Traven. But we're back. We're live this morning. We're live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and a dozen other places. And our fabulous Traven will show those to you in just a second. Uh, but do if Dr. Grampichet is here, and she's going to be answering your questions in real time. Good and, morning. Yeah, I, I just I, I, throw that. I, <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's Lovely like, to be here. I'm like a freight train. No, it's and great. I'm like, I, I, I got a direction. I'm going, and I don't stop. So good morning. Good morning, Jenna. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm excited to be back here with you. Yes. I miss it when we don't have this opportunity. Me too. It just feels weird. And it's been nice because we're back in person and I get to be in the same room with you. And uh, and also what you just told me right before we started, that we're just starting the 12th year? Yeah, this week uh, is our 12th year of doing wow. this together, and uh, that, which is pretty amazing. It's lovely. It's incredible. Uh, it really, and what a privilege to be able to do that with you guys. You, if you watch the show at all, you know that during this hour, Dr. Graham Pichet, who is a true expert in the field of autism, gives us her time for an hour so that we can tour her brain, ask as many questions as you want. I love it because there's no cost to you for that. And if you've ever been like, well, I wish I could ask an autism expert this, what a lovely opportunity to do that. I also want to let you know that Dr. Grant Pichet is really getting it done on TikTok and now on Insta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And I have to say, like, I, for me, it's also very pleasant because, as you know, I am sort of retired. And um, this is very... Uh, a lovely way for me to uh, be able to help families and have contact and reach out. There you go. So, uh, but while you're here, you can be asking your questions right now. As I mentioned, we're live on a bunch of different sites. Later on today, this uh, episode will podcast. Mm -hmm. It will be available as a free download wherever you get your podcasts. And on our website, if you go to autismnetwork.com, you can be searching past episodes, past questions. So if you go to the very top bar and go to podcasts and go to Ask Dr. Doreen, you can go in there and you can put in a topic. Today we're going to be kicking off the show talking about sleep, but let's say you have a bunch of questions about sleep and you want to see what other people have asked mm -hmm. over the years, you can go in there and put sleep in the title and it'll show you exactly the questions people have asked. Um, we update it every once in a while, so it won't have the most recent ones. But And then you can click on it, and it'll take you exactly to a question you answered in 2013, Amazing. which is still valid. Yep. Um, so there's an entire library of Dr. Doreen at, at, but, at answering questions. But if you don't see your particular question, because... Yeah, listen, of it's there's a, new issues coming up. And, and you might have extenuating circumstances and you want to ask the question. You can feel free to be writing it in right now. I see that Estella is already written in and, and we love that interaction. I do have to give the disclaimer that there is no expert in this field who could give individual specific advice. So please understand the, the limitations of this format. Yes. Um, but write in your questions. Be as specific as possible. I always like it when you tell us where you're watching from from. That helps both Dr. Grant Pichet and I to know what resources may or may not be available in your neck of the woods. Exactly. And um, other than that, we just welcome this wonderful expert who has shown so much compassion over her 40 plus years working in this field. Thank you so Compassion much. for individuals on the spectrum, for their families, and everyone who loves them. Thank you very much. It's my honor and pleasure to be involved. Honestly, it's such a wonderful aspect of my life. It's funny, I saw some uh, old colleagues this mm. past weekend and we were just talking about how uh, the most incredibly joyful period of our life, like 
of anything we do, even today, yes. is when we spend time with the families and with the children. Yeah. Feeling when, the, you know, that somebody's getting something. I started to tell you a story yesterday, and I didn't get to finish it, that mm -hmm. a viewer wrote in uh, over the weekend and said on many different platforms, because they wanted to make sure that you and I both got the message, they started watching us, their child started oh. getting ABA therapy as a result. Um, we were talking a lot about intensity, you mm -hmm. and I, and the child was very young and the mom had been told, oh, you know, don't do the intensity thing. But uh, she was listening to us. They started a 40 hour program and it was intense. It was intense. Yeah. He was yeah. a three year old and it was really hard. Yeah. So hard that at one point he threw up oh. because he was so tired. And she said, you know, I really don't, I think this is too much. And they pulled back a little bit to ramp up because yes. his body was yes. saying, you know, this is a lot. Um, and so they just slowed the ramp up, but I and you both counseled her and said, he deserves this opportunity. This is what the research shows. Don't shortchange him. And she wrote to tell us that his, at his recent, he's eight years old now, and in his, re, his recent neurological uh, appointment, they said he no longer qualifies oh, for an autism God, diagnosis. How beautiful is that story? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I so I that. wanted to make sure that I thank shared you. that with you. And she's very excited and wanted to thank us for being a flashlight in the dark. That's awesome. So, I wonder if uh, she would agree to be interviewed. Oh, you know, we asked her once a long time ago to be on the show. I'll ask her again. She was shy. I just uh, love the, these stories because I think it's not just so incredibly... Um, rewarding for, for us to hear, but also because I think there are still parents who, even more so I think now, honestly, than before, they need to hear that. They yeah. just need to hear that persistence pays off. Yeah. And I want to say, for those of you who are like losing your mind right now and going, wait a second, what are you talking about? He doesn't qualify for the diagnosis anymore. Um, I want to make <laughs> sure that people understand that that means that he didn't have enough of a severity of, of to be considered having a disability anymore. He doesn't need support in that he didn't qualify for a one. Yeah, that so, doesn't mean that he that he's a different person or right. we're not talking about cures here. Right, right. His brain functions in a in a unique way, but not as with a disability anymore. Exactly. And that I think is really important what you're yeah. talking about. And it's not it's it is severity for certain, but it's also actual symptoms. Yeah. So it's the number of symptoms and the severity required for something to be considered a disability. Yes. And and the fact that he's not is just fantastic. It's yeah. wonderful, right? I mean and if you think about it, and I know there's this is a very, very hot topic and, and this is a topic yeah. for another day, but if you think about it, that's what life is. Like yeah. we go through life and we learn new tasks and skills and to, we gain tools and we avoid various issues and disabilities and, and that's yeah. what helps us to thrive. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very exciting. I know they're celebrating at their house. We always now are going to start off with a topic. Mm -hmm. You guys can be writing in. You're already writing in questions um, and you can be right on, you can write in on anything. So I want to make sure that, that, you know, it's still, but we're going to pick a topic and have a specific question to just start the show. So we decided that sleep and sleep issues would be our starter Perfect. for today. And we had a question that somebody wrote in and said, I am a single parent who has a child stuck in my bed. Oh yeah. And they said, I keep trying to keep, uh, I, I, I keep trying, I try keeping him in his bed, but the only way I can do that is to lay down with him. Mm -hmm. He goes to sleep, but so do I. Mm -hmm. If I get up and sneak out, he will follow me eventually into my bed and I'm just too tired to fight at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she said, but he is eight. I don't think it's healthy for either of us anymore. And the truth is I never get good sleep either way. Help. Yeah, yeah. And there's, uh, first, let me just say, you know, congratulations, you've now come to the point where you've decided it is important to do something about this. And that's wonderful. Yeah. Because sometimes parents, like, and I love the way the parent has written this issue, because it is true of all of us. We are, it's very hard to do something at night when you're exhausted and you're a single parent to, to begin with. Yeah. And so uh, I, it, please don't feel like this is unusual. I want you to know that most parents go through what you're going through. 
and there are a few steps and I don't want to lie to you, the beginning of it will be a little rough. So perhaps you want to do this if you can take some time off from work, uh, maybe just, uh, you know, three or four days, um, including the weekend. So maybe you take off a Friday and a Monday or something, mm -hmm. and then you definitely will have ample time to deal with this because the body readjusts to new patterns within about three or four nights, repetitive okay. um, sequences. And so the best way, I mean, there's two ways you can go about this. And sometimes parents choose to just kind of cut the cord, right? And uh, put the child in their bed and leave. And the child can cry or complain. And no matter how many times they come, you take them back. And that is what we call flooding, sort of. And it's, it's a very, um, you know, sudden change yeah. in the rules. The way that I recommend is to do a gradual fading of what you've been doing. So let's say you're sleeping in his bed or he falls asleep and uh, that will be like night one. Night mm -hmm. two, I would suggest you put like a cot next to him and you sleep in the cot. And you can spread this out too, yeah. by the way. It doesn't have to be over the course of four nights or whatever. And night three, you will now, you're still in his room, but you're going to move your cot towards the door and you're going to sleep way further away from him. If he gets up to try to, he can't, won't be able to come into your cot. If he tries, you can put him back in his bed. And this is why I'm saying you should take some time off because don't expect to sleep these few yeah. nights. You'll have some rough nights, right? Yeah. And so the concept is eventually you will now move your cot outside of his room. I do recommend that someone, whether it's you or whoever is helping you, spend the night right outside the door because it is pretty common that our kids will wake up, look around the room, not see you are there, and then come searching for you. Yeah. And so that might need to be repeated a few times, two or three nights where the child, you're right outside, Child, if they come out, they don't make it to your room. Yeah. They just, you turn them around, they go. You can even leave the door open if that helps yeah. initially and then close the door. And essentially, you will fade yourself out this way. Now, you, there will be instances where, where your child will still want to come over to you. And it is important that you do not let that happen. Yeah. And you can do a variety of things. For instance... Uh, you can allow your child to have, you know how now we have monitors and you can reverse the monitor mm. so that your child can actually see you if mm. they need to in your room because that allows kids to calm down. Make sure their room is dark. Make sure they have access to things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, music that might be calming. Teach them how to use that. Make sure they have like a, if they have any favorite stuffed animals or blankets or like make sure their room is heavenly right yeah, yeah. and um and that's all really and you just stay with it it takes a little while uh, make sure you do not feed your give your child a drink or food when they wake up mm -hmm. because when our kids get up and they have food or milk or water or whatever it just that becomes an automatic pattern for the body uh, the body just craves something at that time and they wake up and the body wakes up. So no food or drink, it just goes back to bed and no dialogue. Like this is one of the things yeah. that I learned, uh, you know, there's this reverse schedule that we do for babies, infants, mm -hmm. and you don't spend a lot of time trying to calm them down. You literally just put the child back down, say good night and try to leave or get in your cot or whatever stage you're in, but no dialogue at yeah. that time. Yeah. I remember our pediatrician telling me, don't make sure it's not a party when yeah. he wakes up. Make yeah. sure, you know, because then he'll, then it'll always happen. Yeah. I yeah. didn't get it at the time. I think I was too sleep deprived to understand what yeah. he meant. Yeah. Um, but I love your kinder, gentler um, thing. I will say that I think one of the things that we're bad as, uh, bad at as parents is the very slow, uh, fade to something. But the, the thing that makes the most sense to me about this is that if, you know, we, we always want to get to the end result, right? But that often isn't what works. And what I notice, because we're getting, I think, I don't even know if we're doing it this year, the daylight savings time thing. Oh, right. We might right. not. But what I, 
you know, every day the light changes by a minute, a minute and a half. Right. But it's so gradual that we kind of just don't notice it. Right. And then one day we go, oh my gosh, it's dark so much earlier yeah. than it was. I yeah. noticed that the other day. I was like, what do you mean it's dark? It's seven o'clock. When yeah. did that happen? Yeah. Um, but I, when we do it by an hour, mm -hmm. we all freak out for a week. Yeah. We're all, all we're like, what's wrong with me? I can't. And it's because we've changed it too quickly. Absolutely. And it's fascinating to me that as a race of people, we can handle the minute and a half. We can't handle 59 more minutes. Exactly. So if we can just take that lesson and say, okay, so I'm willing to be in the process it might be a month, it might be two months, where every night I'm gonna move that cot an inch further away. And it sounds ridiculous, like it wouldn't work, but the truth is, it does. you're so close when they get up that you can just put them back in and you don't really have to wake all the way up. And eventually yep. they're tired too. That's and right. they just go to sleep. So I, I love this advice and it's and, kinder and gentler to do it oh, this way. Oh, for sure. And there's, I guess we should say two other things. One is that, it, I honestly, it, I've never, I've done this with parents several times and if you can keep a diary about it, it yeah. very, very, very rarely goes over two weeks. Like, we it's a process that if you do it every, a couple of steps every night, it's going to end. And it's well worth it because as this parent wrote, it's very exhausting, right? And it's important yeah. for your child, remember, I always want to try to get parents who are like when your child is five or six, it's like, okay, I don't have to deal with this. But it's wonderful that you're dealing with it at eight because you don't want your child in your bed when they're 18. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sooner or later, you got to deal with this. Yeah. So this is very, very good. The other thing I don't want to forget to say is make sure that you do have a party in the morning if the child has succeeded. Oh, good point. To any level. So in other words, you can actually say to the child, wow, you were in your room most of the night. Like, make sure this is a big deal, yeah. right? Because the child needs to get a lot of reward for actually doing this. And yeah. I want to say there's one of the things I love the most is when you see kids who are just proud of themselves, when yes. you give them that, that reward yeah. and cheer. Yeah. And so I think it's super important to do that as well and make sure the child understands that Sleeping in their room alone is the goal. Yeah. And if they come to your room, it's not like you're going to be angry, you know, but yeah. they're not going to get that reward. Yeah. And I love that the mom identifies that this is not working for her anymore, that she's not good at getting good rest. There's a viral video out right now on, you know, all the social media. I don't know if you've seen it, that it's a time lapse that it shows a mom laying in bed and she's got a child who's probably like one and a half, two who is sleeping with her and it shows throughout the night how that child like lays on her head, <laughs> is all over. I mean, it's hilarious. You sit and watch it, but then you really understand why all the moms oh, that you yeah. see, all of a sudden we're, we just look like five years older and have bags under our eyes I because swear. we're not getting good sleep. No, That's, no, absolutely. You know, and that child, like, like, it's just hilarious. There's like a foot in her nose at it's, one point and she has to move the foot away from her nose. Um, it, you know, we go through those years, but we can't sustain it. It's no, too hard. No, it's very hard. Um, and then we lose our, pro we, well, we get sick. We lose our productivity. We're not really there for our kids in the way that we want to be if we're not getting absolutely. good rest. Uh, okay, we've got a lot of people who are writing in about sleep and other things. Uh, um, uh, Estelle, Estella wrote in and says, my son is having a lot of stimulation before going, before going to bed or when he is taking a shower. So I think, you know, it would stand a reason that if, if you're going to have stimulation, you should move it, what, significantly earlier? Yeah. Uh, or the morning. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, and uh, our journey, Cameron's new life, they said that the moon affects their son oh, with yes. their sleep. And why is this? Well, this is a, a very, you know, known fact. And the moon, we all have, there's, that's why they say like the moon, the magnetism of the moon. So yeah. there's, a, there's definitely a relationship and the moon cycle does affect many of us, not just our kids. It, it actually also even affects mood. It affects yeah. depression and anxiety and so on. But it shouldn't be to the point where your child is not able to sleep. It shouldn't be... If it's a moon thing, then they should be sleeping just as well or poorly in uh, your bed as their own bed. Yeah. So those are Thank you know you, things sir. that you can think of. And 
Uh, but it is important to make sure the room is silent and dark. Like darkness, one of the things people don't realize is like I, I remember reading this and many years ago and immediately covered all the so in your bedroom there's actually sources of light that you don't even think about for yeah. instance my alarm system is in my bedroom right it's next yeah. to my bed and that produces a lot of light yeah and so i had to actually get something that i could cover the alarm system because darkness is what promotes the production of melatonin in your body and that's why you can sleep yeah. so it's very important that it be dark and of course, sometimes our kids are afraid of the dark, which is yeah. a whole different issue, and you need to have a nightlight perhaps for them. Those types of things. You just reminded me that I gotta do that in our bedroom too. I didn't realize until I went and stayed at my niece's house and slept for 10 hours straight. And yeah. I was like, what happened? Yes. First of all, I didn't have dogs waking me up. That's very but true. But it was very dark in the room, and I need to uh, do that in, in my room. Good. That's why people Good. always say you sleep better in basements. Yeah. It's because of the or darkness. Or hotel rooms. Well, yeah, darkness and cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, amazing. Uh, okay, Amanda, we're loving your blue hearts and saying hi to you, too. And, uh, yes, I, we hope that we get to meet you, too, someday soon, our, our journey, Cameron's new life. Uh, the lots have written in, and I'm sending much love to the lots. They're, they're friends of ours from a long time. I have a 15-year-old son who's on the spectrum, verbal, funny, and smart. And then I don't know if you wrote something else in here. Did you send a question from the lots? I know your, your boy is precious. I didn't realize he'd turn 15. Tell him happy birthday from me. Uh, Estella is watching us from Santa Ana, California. You know I love hearing where you're watching from. Uh, oh, and uh, our journey, Cameron's New Life, says, my son is making so much progress this year. You both taught me so much. Mm. May is watching from Rhode Island, saying hello to you, saying hello to the... the uh, the Facebook user who's saying, uh, waving to everybody. Uh, Shannon, how did your son learn to script in his head? My son is almost seven. His language is increasing. Um, that's an interesting thing because um, Jem used to, uh, and they clearly have watched before, Jem used to make high-pitched noises like R2-D2 all the time. Mm -hmm. And he would do scripting mm -hmm. um, and just repeat things over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And then he would do other things, and I'm sure that these are all different things, but he, whatever... <laughs> I do this sometimes myself, that whatever comes into his head would just fall out of his mouth. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about Shamar Moore yesterday, and I, the, oh, first, yeah. the first time when I met Shamar Moore, and he walked up to me and on the red carpet, and the sunlight hit his eyes, <laughs> and he has the most startlingly <laughs> blue eyes, and I said, oh my God, you are an attractive man. <laughs> and it was just like, like the thought came in my head and just, came, and he went, well... And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm happily married. I'm not, I'm just, con I just, like, you, I apologize, but you are a strikingly handsome man. Um, and That's I, but, so funny. But so he gets it honestly from me. But Jem used to, you know, do all of these <laughs> things, and then he was taught yeah. to, yeah. that he could still have the thought, but that yeah. it could stay in his head. Yeah. And I love that you're telling me this, because I remember the first time someone at card came to me and said i don't know what to do about the fact that my child my patient is just like saying all these repetitive things and it right. wasn't just thoughts it was like you know n narration that's yes. what it was it was yeah. narration from tv they would narrate yeah. exactly what they heard on tv and i sat there and i thought i think that if we just have to teach our kids what the difference is between thinking and saying. Yeah. I fully remember that moment when yes. I said, and I was like, we're going to have to write a lesson about this. Yeah. And I think that's probably what he went through because yeah. it was the difference of, we all, you guys, if you think about it, we all have constant <laughs> language in our heads, right? We Can I tell you something crazy? Yeah. That when we started wearing the masks, and I was home for two years, and then I, would, and then I started wearing a mask going out in public, and it is, I still find myself doing this. It's like, I think you can't hear me because I have the mask on. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I walk through a grocery store and I go, well, that is a stupid way to do that. And I wonder why, and I'm just talking constantly out loud. <laughs> you need and, this lesson. And somebody came up to me like, you know, we can hear you. And I was like, 
Oh my goodness. Are you I'm serious? like a crazy woman. I you need to, I just you need I'm just listen. yakking away and going, Oh, I I you know, I don't think I would have worn that that way. That's it's horrible. It's horrible that But yeah, see that's that's I exactly, need this lesson. Well, I mean that's yeah. what it is. A lot of times we're thinking things or it's not even like we're talking to ourselves, right? Yes. In our head. Yes. And so it was, uh, I think when we started the lesson, it started out by teaching the child out loud or quiet or like just think it. Yeah. And then do, tell me what you thought. And then yes. that helped the child understand that he can have a whole dialogue in his head without other people knowing. Yeah. And that is kind of important, I think, because especially with our kids, they, 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 I think some of our kids get to a point where they worry about having that, that language in their head. Yeah, like it's somebody else and, other than that. Or it's wrong, them. or there's yes. something wrong with it. Yes. But to teach our kids that that is called thought, that's your mind, yes. and that's totally fine, is in so many ways good, because yeah. it also not just helps them in this instance, but it also helps them realize that you know, they can have a whole communication with themselves. Yes. Like they can come to, they can reason things out by themselves. They're not alone. Like it leads to a lot of- And they can calm of, themselves. Exactly. Self-regulation. Exactly. It's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah. And I, I can remember them sitting at the table. I remember think actually- say Yes, it, uh, the it. Peter sitting there and saying, okay, I'm going to think about Batman right now. Yeah. And then he sat there and he was like, could you tell I was thinking about Batman? And, and Jem was like, well, you were smiling. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, he, and, then, and he said, now I want you to think about something you like. Yeah. And can, do, do I know for sure? Exactly. And, then, and, and it was this whole big thing. And it was this crazy moment when Jem sort of got that, which yeah. was sort of fun. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, now, many people wrote in and said that they were having the musical bed problem, too. Um, and so I'm glad that you had an opportunity to talk about that. Uh, NH says, my son is almost five, speaking well, and is fully potty trained. Um, number one, but refuses to go number two in the potty. We've tried everything, toy incentives, discussing it with him, different seats, different setups, taking breaks. He can wait days, so we can't just wait him out. He sits on the potty with the iPad for a long time without going. Mm -hmm. What else can we try? We think he has irritational anxieties that are hard to put in words. So... So glad that you are live with us right now. Yeah. I need you to tell me more. I need you to tell me how, what happens when he does go, when he does have a bowel movement. Does he uh, go and hide somewhere? Is he wearing pull-ups? Give me a little bit of detail about what is actually happening right now with how he has bowel movements. Okay, yeah. and then write it in and tell us. Uh, Amanda mentioned that about the moon, uh, and when we we're talking about sleep, circadian rhythm and dark and cold and having it cold mimics the sun going down, which promotes melatonin. Right, there right. we go, Amanda. I love that. Laurie has written in from Chandler, Arizona. Uh, hi, uh, Laurie. And, uh, and our Cameron's new journey is, uh, new life is watching from Southern uh, Oregon, which is fabulous. Uh, somebody had written in a question earlier today, I think it was. Hi, Shannon and Dr. Grampy Shea. I'm a parent of an autistic five-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. I have joined many Facebook groups for parents of autistic kids, mainly for support and just to know I'm not going through this alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is one topic that seems to come up from time to time on these groups, and that is the term Einstein syndrome. Oh. Many parents seem to think that their kids fall into this category, possibly because the prognosis is more favorable than that of autism. I would like to find out if Einstein syndrome is a recognized diagnosis, and more importantly, if Dr. Grampiche believes it's a real condition. So thank you for that question. It's a great question. It's not a real diagnosis. It doesn't exist in the DSM. Um, I think it's referred to um, because there is a, there are a group of kids on the autism spectrum who are absolute geniuses in one way or another. And there is no question about that. I mean, I've met so many children who have, over the years, and like, you know, I've seen things from our kids that are, I could tell you story after story where, where we're all just sitting in a room going, oh my God, well, you know, and, it, and it's, I tell you stories from literally 
40 years ago and a month ago. Things that they can do Things that are that amazing. Things that they can do and they're very different. Yeah. You know, so one of the first experiences I had ever where I realized that this was the autistic savant. It used mm -hmm. to be called that actually yeah. back in the 70s and 80s. And what it was was yeah, these incredible skills. I We had two brothers um, at, at the, this was when I was at UCLA still. And they were, they were both autistic and they would say to each other numbers mm. that one of our staff figured out were, they were playing this game where one child would say a number and the other one would say the logarithm. Oh. Then the other one would say the logarithm of that and so on and so forth. And that was their game. And that was, that was one. Then I remember another child from the very early days of CARD, who was one of those children who can do calendar things. Yeah. So he would memorize the calendars and he would, we used to ask him like, you know, what day does April 10th, 2027, yeah. and that was back in the 80s or yeah. so, you know, fall in on and he would go Tuesday. And we literally had no, because this was before computers, you right. know, so it was very, no way we could check it, but like, they, <laughs> We literally, right. one of the guys had ordered this whole ca systematic calendar thing that right. we had to like calculate and it was this big table, but it was unbelievable stuff like that, yeah. right? And all the way to, you know, we have many children who are, I, I've told you the story of my little guy in South Africa who uh, he could count things yes. in an instant. Right. So like all the ceiling tiles. In, yeah. In a it, for him, it was that I remember had like took a pile of marbles, put them on the table and said how many. And then he said something like 12 and, you know, and or 20. And we counted and there was only like 12 on the table. And, right. I, and then we, he explained that he was also counting the remainder that were in the bag, you it know, and I was visible. like, oh my God. Like, right. So, but he had, he had this very incredible talent of counting all the way, you know, fast forward to a year ago, you know, my, there are children who actually can, are very nonverbal and it's very hard for them to articulate anything. Yeah. And I have seen such a child actually with the uh, you know, where the letters and you yes. put your fingers into the letter yeah. and she could say incredible statements. Oh, yeah. So there is a whole as And then, of course, there are children, we, many children we know who are amazing at music. They just will play something straight out. And yeah. other, children who are unbelievable artists. Yeah. I mean, so all of that exists. And I think that's why it is referred to as Einstein syndrome, because... Yeah. It's a selective area of incredible strength, yes. uh, unusual strength, like yes. beyond our capabilities. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, it's an attractive thing. It's not, you know, I, I can understand that as a parent, we'd want to say that's what my child has. And it's very possible. There are some children who really do have savant skills, yes. right? Um, but nevertheless, I don't know that that's necessarily um easier for them to to yeah you know how they do in life because it doesn't there like i said there are children who are severely affected in other ways but have photographic memory yeah and the fact that they have photographic memory allows them to be kind of treated a little bit like a celebrity in life mm -hmm. but at the same time they still struggle because they have these other areas that they that they're not capable of handling in life. Yeah. So it's hard. I think uh, I can remember when the very day that Jem was being diagnosed, I uh, when the doctor said, you know, her thing, she had no bedside manner and it was had a very German accent. And she said, yeah, autism. Mm -hmm. Right. That was how she broke it to me. And uh, thank you. And I, 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 at that point, I didn't know that much. And I said, well, but is, you know, where is it on the, that spectrum? Right. Like, right, are right. we, are we at least Asperger's? Right. Um, because I thought, oh, well then maybe he'll have some great ability to be a mathematician was the thought process in my head because I was looking for something to hold on to. Of course. Of and, course. And, and she didn't have anything for me in her bag. She was like, I don't even know. Yes. I don't know if your child's going to talk again. Yes. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. 
Um, but that was the thing. I was looking for something to hold on to that at least, and I do think I see in parents when you find the thing that you're, whether it's the thing that your kid is good at or the thing that your kid is drawn to, that's their niche, it's almost like it's a relief. Of that it's a puzzle that you have to solve until then. I'm thinking about a friend who, when she discovered that her daughter can sing opera. Yeah. And it was like, okay, now we know what path we're on. We know the direction. Um, so I do think there is some comfort for us in that. But the truth of the matter is, even if she had been able to say to me, well, your son has Asperger's, there's many people that I understand now that would have been that classification that will, would say to me, listen, I have the ability to do this, but nobody understands the level of anxiety that I have. Yeah. So we yeah. have to take it day by day. We have to, you know, meet our children where they are. We have to play to their strengths and shore up their weaknesses I like any so. other parent. That's exactly what I was going to say, Shannon. I totally mm -hmm. agree with you. I think the same level of pride is you can apply that to just any parent, yes. right? Like when our kids have some area that they're strong in, it's we're proud of them and we're grateful and, and we show off. Yes. And that's, I think... All parents do that, obviously, right? And this is part of that as well. Yeah. The, the fact of the matter is, like, you know, I could say um, my son, he's hilarious. He has one of the best sense of humors that I've ever seen. He could be a stand-up comic. He's so amazing, right? But the, but the truth is, he, there are other areas where he could still benefit from instruction. And well, so, he's a person. He's a person, and we're all like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, so, so it's important to not just hold on to the strengths, yeah. but it, it, at the same time, please do hold on to the yeah. point because it's wonderful for our kids also to see that we're proud of them. But at the same time, you have to nurture all the areas that need help too. We should make cups and hats and things that say, play to their strengths, shore up their weaknesses. Exactly. To remind us. See, I love that. We have to we have to go to a break, and um, I want to say that uh, you've got an event that's coming up. There's a yes. wonderful charity that yes. you are the president of, yes. Autism Care Today. Which I want to just say, Autism Care Today, um, we founded Autism Care Today, believe it or not, I think it's about 18 years ago now. And we, uh, it was uh, uh, parents at CARD and I, uh, in particular, I want to call out and thank uh, Bill and, and Poeta Cernius who were amazing back then and still are and always have been. And we together founded this organization and very quickly a couple of other parents joined us. And um, we, our goal was and is, it's called ACT, ACT Today, Autism Care Today. And our goal is and has always been to help families directly. It's not about research, which everything is important, but ACT's goal is to help families. And so we have given out grants that are, we're almost at around $2 million of grants that we've given out, and we're very, very proud of this. And so we have this, uh, you know, usually we would have an event called Denim, Diamonds and Stars, which of course our dear Nancy Alspa Jackson was the director of that and did a fantastic job for us every year. But we have not due to COVID and um, we decided this year that we would do something a little different. And so we are doing a Halloween event, which is called All Ghouls Gala, Gala, Gala. And it is kind of exciting because it's our first event after COVID, and um, we'd love to tell our audience about it. If you're in the Los Angeles area, you might want to attend. So take a look at this message. Oh, maybe not. Not yet. Okay. I, I was going to the All Ghouls Gala. Do you want to go to the other one instead? Okay. Here, here is the All Ghouls Gala one. <laughs> I'm talking to Traven in my ear, you guys. That's what that was. If you think I'm just like... <laughs> Talking to myself, Draven is in my ear. You are invited to a frightfully fun evening at the first annual All Ghouls Gala. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be scary at an exclusive venue in Woodland Hills, California on Saturday, October 29th, 2022. <laughs> Join us, if you dare, from 6 p.m. 
until death do us party. <laughs> Dress to kill. Devilish prizes will be awarded during a spooktacular costume contest. Tickets to this exclusive event are available now at Eventbrite. But they won't last long, will you? <laughs> Proceeds from the event benefit autism care today. So get your scare on. <laughs>
you can reach Shapiro Legal Group at 888-657-0455. Again, that number is 888-657-0455. You can also contact Shapiro Legal Group by going to shapirolegalgroup.com forward slash autism. Shapiro Legal Group PLLC associates with attorneys throughout the country to help people nationwide and is licensed in New York and Washington, D.C. and has its principal office at 60 East 42nd Street, New York, New York. This ad was read by a non-attorney spokesperson. I was wondering about that ad. I mean, that's all I took for my migraines while I was pregnant, and that's a lot of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so I would encourage you to call the number. There's still, in, there's still more research being done, um, but um, there is a possibility that there's financial compensation. And, and there were a lot of us that that's, that was what we were told to take. Um, but they are seeing now in the preliminary studies that um, they're showing that there, there's a higher prevalence of children on the spectrum whose mothers took it. So... Uh, it's very hard because I think we all feel like, my gosh, you know, what, what if I did something that yes, caused <laughs> some of the difficulties that my child may be having right now? And there's, the, there's no fruit in beating ourselves up about it, but this is something that you can actually do. You can call the number and have a conversation with them, see if you qualify to be part of this group um, and, yep. and see about that. So that's why we're, we're showing you that information. Um, so, you know, check that out with them. Uh, I wanted to go back, Dr. Grampiche, that we had, uh, my double chin is hitting my mic. I apologize, you guys. Uh, so, like, I just need to put it to the side there. Um, uh, but NH wrote back in about mm -hmm. uh, the bathroom problem, saying when he goes, he hides in another room or a corner. He's very sneaky. He goes in his undies or, or diaper at night. Yeah. And that's, that was exactly the reason I asked that question, because that is, when that happens, mm -hmm. it shows actually a very good thing, which is that the child is embarrassed mm -hmm. or th thinks that this process that their body is going through has to be done in private. Well, it also is an awareness that they need to poop, right? There's yeah, a yeah. feeling that comes and they go, I'm going to go hide under the table and poop. And, and poop. So that's, it actually, in a lot of ways, shows a lot of things are working right. Oh, yeah, for sure. And But for whatever reason... They think that pooping is either wrong, in which case they have to hide, and probably, honestly, part of the reason our kids start to feel that way is because when they poop in their underwear or something, uh, you know, we tell them, no, that's yeah. not what I want you to do. And they don't realize that you're talking about the underwear part. Right. They think it has something to do with just pooping. Right. And so the int the what you have to do is you have to gradually get him to a point where going to the bathroom is the corner, is the place where he can right. hide. And so you will start by when he poops in his underwear or something, don't have any kind of negative reaction to it. Just have him go with you to the toilet and actually take the underwear and empty the poop into the toilet, flush it, and celebrate. Yes. Okay, and he will start to realize that's where poop has to go. And, um, and you know, the more you do it, and the other thing is with our kids, usually they have a time frame like some kids will go right after breakfast, some kids will wait and go right after dinner, it just, Kids have a time frame. So you want to make sure that you spend that time with your child. Because if you can see them, they're about to go sneak into a corner and you direct them to the bathroom and you just point and, you know, give them a hint. Remember, this is where it goes and just leave them in there. Yeah. They will start to get the idea that this is what they need to do. Right, and as soon as you've had any success at all, you need to eliminate the pull-ups and diapers because we did this study which showed that if you keep putting the child in diapers, they will keep yeah. going in the diaper. It's Whereas confusing. If you get, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just what they're used to. So let me ask you this. If, if he has a place in the corner that he likes to do it, should you maybe take a a potty chair and I know with some kids they're older and put it put that in the corner so this is very a lot another interesting thing we learned over time is that the 
kids have a less of a harder time going on a potty chair than the toilet. Mm -hmm. And I think that might have something to do with a lot of kids are afraid of where things go when they're in the toilet, yeah. right? It's like, what is that hole? And yeah. how creep could I ever fall into that yeah. hole? And they have these thoughts, yes. right? So well, that yeah. movie flushed away didn't help anyone, <laughs> right? When That's the little right. rat goes down and he's in the sewer, that helped no one. Well, and and like they've seen things disappear in there. Yeah, right? and it's sort of uh, creepy for them. So you gotta. It is a good idea to actually put a potty chair as long as you can. They have these potty chairs now where you can transfer the seat of the potty chair onto the toilet. Oh, okay. That is kind of the best way to do it because now the child's used to this particular like cushiony seat and you yeah. now have it on the toilet. But I think for this child, it's really important that they learn that the corner or the secret, a lot of kids go in the closet and do this, right? Yeah. That is for them should be the toilet, the yeah. bathroom. The right. bathroom is the corner that you want to go right. in, right? And then if we realize, oh, they still have a fear of the actual toilet, yeah. we can start using a potty chair first okay. and transfer that. But let us know how that goes. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say that we ha one of the problems that we had was that the bathroom is a very echoey place. Yes. And for whatever reason, sensory, that would just dis dysregulate my child completely yeah. out the corner, yeah. around the corner, down the block. And when we realized that, we, we put a lot more padding and, and oh, fabric was, yeah. and things so that there was, it wasn't as echoey and we found that it helped with the potty training. But then, then we had the problem when we would go out, like, you know, be in a Target bathroom, talk about echoey. Oh, yeah. And my child would be totally fine. You take him in a Target bathroom and he, would lose oh my mood. gosh, and be an entirely different child. And it took me a while to figure that out. And I, I remember thinking, how is this ever going to end? Like, yeah. is he going to be 22 and, and he's yeah. going to be, you know, doing a lecture and then he's going to go into the bathroom and fall apart? Yeah. And it, it, it worked itself out. We oh. did a lot of different things and we, you know, it wasn't like we did nothing. Um, but I just want to say to people, because you get stuck in a phase and you go, we're going to be stuck here forever. Yeah. And it's never going to be better. Your child is going to poop in the potty at some point and stop doing it other places. It is going to happen. You're going to yeah. find it one way or the other. Don't give up. It will get better. Right. Uh, Dozer says, what about a, a pull up at night? My son has diabetes insipidus that makes him pee a lot. And even with a good night, he will wet through sometimes. I bought a regular toilet seat that has a smaller potty seat attached um, to, uh, to it that yeah. it, it's held to the lid with a magnet uh, when not, not in use. use. Yeah, that's, that's the, exactly awesome the type cool. of seat. And you know, if you're dealing with other health issues like diabetes, where you ha you're naturally is gonna go to the bathroom or, or urinate multiple times, um, I think depending on the age of the child, you might need to continue for a while on the diapers, but sooner or later, uh, again, depending on the age of the child, you're gonna have to teach them to get up and use the toilet. Yeah, but I think when you say get, getting rid of the diaper, diaper during the day is one thing, pull up at night is an entire other thing. It's a different thing. thing, yes, it is a different thing. Yeah. Uh, we have a friend that at one point, his first invention, you and I share a friend, his first invention was that he made sheets oh, that yes. were waterproof and disposable. Yeah. And he was marketing them to college students. So oh, you would funny. you would get this um, this sheet pack and it was both the top sheet and the bottom sheet and you would put the the sheet on the fitted sheet on and then if something every week you could just pull one off so you didn't have to do laundry if you were a college student yeah but he made them waterproof and he would go on these different shows and they would make fun of him and they would go are you peeing your bed and is that why <laughs> and when I met him and I saw this I was like you marketed this all wrong you should have marketed this to parents because this would have made life so much easier That's so true um, by that I'm point. Absolutely. he'd sold the company but uh, a missed opportunity <laughs> and he was like really would that have been helpful I was like are you kidding me because if your child wet the bed and all you had to do was pull the sheet yeah. put them over the top pull the sheet and dispose of the sheet and it didn't go through to the mattress well, you know, but you know that like the original studies for bed wetting they have a device that you can actually buy still today which is it looks like a, a heating pad. It's a uh -huh. little bit bigger, and you put it under the sheet. Right. And as soon as it gets wet, it either will vibrate right. or have a little bell. And it wakes them up. It wakes them up, right. See, but I always was like, isn't that too late? It They've is already... too late, but it's aversive. 
No, it's I don't, kind I don't of like, like aversives. It's a negative consequence. I don't like aversives. Exactly. Because I personally don't like aversives. Okay, do we have time for one more question? Sure. Uh, it's, a, it's a doozy. Uh, my older son is six, verbally delayed and autistic. He constantly is attacking us and destroying my home. He responds mm. to nothing. The only peace I have is when he sleeps. Ugh. I'm terrified for my life for my 11-year-old child. I'm scared of my own son, and I don't know what to do. I, I've had <sighs> to lock me and my baby in the room just to keep him safe. Please help me. I don't know what to do. And that came a day ago. Oh, my gosh. I wish they were watching because we really should have a few back and forth sessions with okay. this parent. Um, Let me say this, if they are watching, can you write to me, Shannon, at autism-live.com so that we can be connecting with you and asking questions. Please, and also just come back on the show again so that you can we can have dialogue. But one thing I want you to start doing right away is um, for let us know what is occurring when he becomes aggressive. What has led to him becoming aggressive in that moment? I'm not talking about like historically, I'm talking about what causes him to aggress. And that is super important because without that, I don't know what the function of the behavior is. I don't know why he is doing it. If he could, other, if he was calm and had language, what would he be saying instead of hitting? So please let us know and I'm certain we can help guide you through some of this. And he's six, so yeah. the good news is, and I wanna congratulate you and support you in saying I need help. Yes. Because that's the hardest thing in the world to do, but he's six, now is a great time because at six, you still, you know, he is still, uh, a person that is seeking something, yes. right? There's something obviously that he wants, and at six you can change this equation, and he's small enough that you know you still probably have the upper hand more than you think. Yes. Um, and not waiting until he's 12 is not a good idea. Exactly. Six is now is the good time. Um, so please write to us so that we and can further that, help please. you with yes. this. Other than that, we are out of time, but I really wanna take a second to thank everybody to be here. I also want to let you know that next week's show, we have a very special Ask Dr. Doreen that we're gonna be showing next week. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very special guest, Austin Butner. I've, I haven't had the opportunity to meet him, but you know him. And um, he is uh, an amazing philanthropist and uh, has had many interesting jobs here. He most recently was the superintendent of Lo uh, Los Angeles Unified School Districts throughout the pandemic. That's right. And before that, he was the publisher and CEO of the Los Angeles Times. I mean, yes. the guy has had a very interesting life. <laughs> and he's going to be here talking with us about a very interesting proposition that's going to be on the ballot in just a few weeks here in California that has the ability to change a lot of lives. And, and I know for some of you, you might be thinking, well, that's California. But you know how things go in California. If it works, then it, it spreads. That's really what happened with ABA. That's right. um, so we're looking forward to having him with us mm -hmm. on next week's show. And we hope that you guys will tune into that very important show. I'll give you a hint. It's about funding arts for our kids. And that helps our children, Yes. but it also helps the other children to be able to appreciate our children. And there's so many other benefits to the arts. And this is huge. It is what, huge. It is huge. What and he is proposing yes. is life-changing and could, could be something that 20 years from now we all look back and go, ah, that was the moment when things got better. That's right. So I'm excited about I'm it. I'm very excited. And just the, having the opportunity to have him on, he's a very exceptional person. Yeah. I'm excited about it. A little nervous. Yeah. It'll um, be fun. But, uh, but it, the good kind of nervous. So we will be back next week with that. On tomorrow's show, our topic on Autism Live, we're talking about autism and dating. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that Autism uh, in, uh, in Love won three Emmys. Wow. Which is amazing, and one of them for casting. So on tomorrow's show, we have Chris Assad, who's a licensed marriage and family therapist, and Tom Island, who identifies as an individual who is on the spectrum. They are leading a new 
autism dating program, and they're going to talk about some of the ins and outs of that tomorrow on tomorrow's Wonderful. show. Wonderful. Then on Thursday, we're debuting a new podcast that we're doing here that is called uh, Let's Talk All the Things with our special guest, Rachel Bird. Mm -hmm. Um, she's one of my besties and listen, if you, the, it will be the funniest hour we do this week. And she is, she is Martha Stewart in a different dress, um, and an autism parent. Her, um, her son is a pretty famous actor, uh, Kobe Bird, who we've had on the show many times before. She is a panic and a half. So the two of us together get ready, fasten well, your seatbelt. And I wish I was on with you because it's your birthday on Thursday. Well, there is that so too. it's going to be a lovely And day. it's a big birthday. It's I'm a turning a really big mm, birthday. interesting number that I am in denial about. No, no, so we're not nice. going to talk about that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope you guys will tune in. I'd forgotten about that, that yes, because uh, that's how much denial I'm in <laughs> about this birthday. But uh, so, and then of course, we'll be uh, showing an episode of Stories from the Spectrum on Friday. I love that some of you are starting to tune in and get the memo that it's one of the hottest things going, Stories on the Spectrum. That's on Friday. So, uh, and so we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. And thank you, Dr. Grant. Thank Pichet. you so much, Shannon. Bye, Bye -bye. everyone. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.